My name is Charles A. Teal Sr. and I am the retired chief of the Hartford Fire Department in Hartford, Connecticut. Throughout my 28 year career, I was able to acquire three college degrees, receive many awards and several promotions in record setting fashion. However, things didn't start out that way. Simply stated, I dropped out of high school when I was 14 years old. It was and still is the worst decision of my life. When I was 17, I had a conversation with my fifth grade gym teacher, Walter Doc Hurley Sr. Most people knew him as Doc Hurley. In just one conversation, he made me aware of how important it was to be of service, to be persistent, and to get an education. Armed with that advice, I set out to become academically and professionally successful. The following information is what I learned on that journey. Hi, I'm Charles A. Teal Sr., retired chief of the Hartford Fire Department. Welcome to the Tools of Learning. The following is a section of a 20-part program that I developed over the course of 32 years, and its purpose is to enhance your ability to succeed academically and professionally. To illustrate the importance of what you are about to see and hear, I'd like for you to consider the following. That's like putting a cart before the horse is an expression that is quickly losing its meaning because we aren't accustomed to seeing horses or carts anymore. However, some of us remember seeing this combination very well. Why is it not practical to put the horse behind the cart? When you think about it, there are some benefits to this arrangement. One of them being that the person in the cart does not have to look at or smell the back of a horse for the duration of their journey. However, the primary reason why putting the cart before the horse does not work is you could not steer the cart if the horse was behind the cart. The horse could still push the cart, but the people in the cart would not go to where they wanted to go. And so it is with our means of getting an education or training. From the very beginning, whenever students are assigned something to learn, we teach it to them in a classroom setting, and then we expect them to learn it. Then if the students do not learn the information, they receive failing grades. That's putting the cart before the horse. The efforts of everyone far too often fail to direct the student to the rewarding careers that the students would love to pursue. Although it is past the time to change, it is not too late to do so. Stand by for another potentially life-changing presentation of Chief Teal's The Tools of Learning. Hello and welcome to tool number one of Chief Teal's The Tools of Learning. We are at the entrance of what was once known as Weaver High School on Ridgefield Street in Hartford, Connecticut. As a student, I hated being here because of my bad grades. One day, just a few months after I started my freshman year, I exited through those doors and vowed never to come back. I came very close to keeping that promise. I had been out of school for around two years when authorities caught up with me. Before long, I was walking through the front door of this building for an appointment with my guidance counselor. As I waited to talk with him, I had a conversation with a student who said, why don't you go to Hotchkiss for the summer? You can get two credits. The Hotchkiss School was part of the GOAL program, and GOAL stood for Greater Opportunity. It meant summer school for students from Hartford and Harlem, New York. Since I saw it as a way to start catching up on what I had missed, the next thing I knew, I was on my way to Lakeville, Connecticut. It was there that I learned about tool number one, use the study schedule. For more information on tool number one, let's go back to our studio. Here we are at the Hotchkiss School in Lakeville, Connecticut. The learning environment was so productive here that it resulted in the creation of the very first tool presented in the Tools of Learning program. It's about using a study schedule. A study schedule keeps you from doing anything but studying when you should be studying. It is number one in my program because if you aren't willing to set time aside for studying, then you don't have the desire necessary to succeed academically and professionally. While I attended classes at the Hotchkiss School, every student was directed to study at a certain time of the evening. To ensure that students abided by this rule, 
we were given a study schedule and told to place it on the desk in our rooms. The room was so small that all it could hold was a bed and a desk, so no matter where you went in your room, you could see your schedule. We were also directed to be in our rooms at our desks with our books open during the time specified on the schedule that they gave us. There were no locks on the doors, so we knew that any time they wanted to, the school could come in and determine if we were studying, and all they had to do was open our door. I distinctly remember them doing so. Fortunately for me, I was at my desk with my books open. If we were not at our desks with our books open, it would spell trouble. Eventually, you would be sent back home. Although this method may seem extreme to most students and adults, it was most effective when I took classes here. However, I didn't start using this method away from the Hotchkiss School until 11 years later. It was one of those tools that I had to remember from my past positive learning experiences so that I could get through firefighter training. I was learning how to become a firefighter when I first started using this system at home, and the place I put my schedule was on my television set. The reason why I did this is because I knew that after having a hard day of learning how to fight fires, the most relaxing thing that I could do was watch television. But as I sat down to watch TV, that schedule would be there, reminding me of what I should be doing. A study schedule will keep you from scheduling other things when you should be studying. A study schedule is more important today than it was in 1971, back when I first started using it. Back then, we had one black and white television in our homes, and we were content to have that. Since that time, the following things have competed with the time we used to invest while studying. We've got more televisions in the home. The televisions are now color television. We have cable television, personal computers, video games, smartphones, computers with access to the internet, and even social media. With each new development, we have had less time for studying. These changes have contributed to our nation going from number one in the world in some subjects in 1945 to being number 26 today. A study schedule can help reverse this trend, especially if you tell your friends and family about your study schedule. Your study schedule should be placed in a location you walk by frequently in your home or on any device that you have with an alarm on it. Television was once known as the great thief of time. Well, if television was the thief of time, then the smartphone is time's assassin. Unless you are using your smartphone to accomplish or learn something, you are not investing your time wisely. If you find yourself using a lot of social media, place your study schedule on your favorite device, like your smartphone, Put an alarm on it telling you that it is time to study, and use that phone only after you have accomplished and learned what you should have learned for that day. Hello and welcome to tool number two of Chief Teal's The Tools of Learning. We are at the former location of the Artist Collective on Clark Street in Hartford, Connecticut. I played the clarinet and the saxophone as a child. This was between the ages of 10 and 14. When I turned 19, a group of my friends and I decided to form a band, so I took up music again. We weren't any good, but we had a lot of fun. To learn and to practice, I used to come to this building. These were not especially good times because I had recently failed to get passing grades and courses I had taken at Greater Hartford Community College. So I relied on my music as a means to console myself when I was feeling especially depressed. It actually worked quite well. So much so that I wrote a note and placed it in my saxophone case. It read, the next time you find yourself laziest to practice, think about how it feels to have a lack of accomplishment. Out of necessity, I had discovered on my own the secret to fighting depression. It's called aspiring and accomplishing. I learned that if I had major goals that excited me, like performing in front of an audience, and I got something done every day to reach those goals, like mastering a new song, I would not be as depressed as I would be if I did not do something worthwhile daily. Years later, I would add a third A to the group called ATTAIN, which means to reach a major goal. And so was developed what I refer to as tool number two of Chief Teal's The Tools of Learning, the triple A's of enthusiasm, aspire, 
accomplish, and attain. For more information on this, let's return to our studio. Although most of us know what depression is, most of us have a slightly different understanding of what despair is. Well, Webster's Dictionary defines it as to lose all hope or confidence in winning. The problem with the despair is that it can prevent you from even trying to succeed. You will assume that solutions to problems like Chief Teal's The Tools of Learning will work for some people, but definitely won't work for you. Regarding depression, some psychologists call depression the common cold of psychology. The problem here is that depression can prevent us from studying effectively. Sometimes it can stop us from studying at all. To help prevent this from happening to us, the Tools of Learning recommends the triple A's of enthusiasm. They are aspire, accomplish, and attain. When it comes to aspiring, Ralph Waldo Emerson once said, nothing great was ever accomplished without enthusiasm. And getting a quality education is a great thing because we can do great things once we have one. Well, we can enhance our level of enthusiasm by aspiring or thinking about the great things we are going to do with the information that we are about to learn. For some people, this means getting an education, a good job, and then paying off all of their bills. Other people need something more, like thinking about all the people they will be able to help once they learn the information they are about to study. The importance of determining what your ultimate goal is cannot be overstated. If your goal is meaningful enough, you can overcome even the greatest tragedy. Having a goal well worth pursuing will get you out of bed when you otherwise won't have the ability to do so. Whatever it is that you want to do with the information that you're about to learn, think about it. It will help you to feel enthusiasm. When it comes to accomplishment, accomplish daily. To ensure that we stay enthusiastic, we must write up a list of things we feel we should accomplish on a daily basis. That way, we can feel like we have done something positive. Getting the things done on that list builds enthusiasm. As far as attaining is concerned, unless you know everything, one of the things that you should have on your list of things to accomplish is study. That's because of the importance of attaining an educational or professional milestone when it comes to building enthusiasm. Attaining means reaching a long-term goal via the short-term goal of studying. It's taking all the studying you have done and graduating or getting promoted or starting your own business. If you don't think this works, then think back. When was the last time you saw a depressed person at their graduation. Remember that the ultimate goal here is to improve ourselves at least 2% per week. And that way, even if we take two weeks off a year, we will have improved ourselves 100% every year. That kind of improvement builds enthusiasm. Hello, and welcome to tool number three of Chief Teal's The Tools of Learning. We are currently located in the former headquarters for the Hartford Fire Department at 275 Pearl Street in Hartford, Connecticut. While applying for the position of firefighter, I interacted with a captain by the name of Richard Epps. He was the man in charge of the Special Services Division, which was the public education division of the Hartford Fire Department. His office was right here. At one point he told me, you'll have no problem getting on the job and when you do, apply yourself. Turn off the television and pick up the books." End of quote. When he said this, I was reminded of my days at the Hotchkiss School in Lakeville, Connecticut. I did very well there, even though I had not been in school during most of the school year or the year before that. The fact that we were mandated to use a study schedule at the Hotchkiss School helped, but after hearing those words from Captain Epps, it became very apparent that there was another reason why I was successful in that learning environment. It's because televisions were not allowed in the rooms. So I didn't have the temptation many teenagers give into. 
they keep the television on with the volume down. Somehow they think that with the volume down, they can study in front of the television set. That's not true at all. If we aren't watching the television, then why do we have it on? Therefore, with Captain Epps' words, turn off the television and pick up the books, tool number three, avoid distractions to enhance the ability to learn, understand, and remember information was born. So stand by for more information on tool number three of Chief Teal's The Tools of Learning. Here's an alarming statistic. Texting while driving kills nine people per day in the United States of America. That's a lot of pain and suffering caused by the fact that many of us refuse to believe that we cannot think of two things at one time. So let's all try and do something. Think of what you like to do most when you are on summer vacation. Now, think about what you don't like to do during the winter time. Can you think of both of them at the same time? No, you can't. No one can think of two things at the same time. Either we are thinking about one thing or we are thinking about another. We may quickly bounce from one thought to the other, which is what multitasking truly is. But while we are thinking about one thought, we are missing something important about the other one. All of us want to make the learning environment as comfortable as possible. But some of us take this desire to the extreme by playing music or having the television on while we study. Whenever I see someone studying with the television on, I can't help but ask, how can you study with such a distraction? The usual reply is, I'm not watching it. Well, my next question is, if you are not watching it, then why do you have it on? The same is true of the radio. Watch a teenager studying while the radio is on. The head will bob to the beat, they may even tap their feet. Sometimes a song will come on and they will stop what they are studying and they will say, oh, that's my song. Then they will turn up the volume until their song has ended. Well, if they're not listening to it, how did they know that it was their song that was on while it was playing? The reason we enjoy having the television on or music playing while we study is because our minds are capable of hearing thousands of words per minute and we are only capable of studying with some possible exceptions, hundreds of words per minute. So subconsciously, we are actually listening to the radio or watching the television and not giving our undivided attention to the material we are reading. So in effect, we are just reading and not studying. Don't be fooled into thinking that you can avoid being distracted by turning the volume down. The images you see on the screen of a television set will distract you from what you are trying to study. This is because it interferes with your ability to visualize the information you are trying to learn, understand, and remember. And visualization is the most effective learning tool in the world. Music is also a distraction to the learning process because music can make you visualize the words in the song when you should be visualizing the information you are studying. Even without words in it, music can create an emotional response within us. Sometimes it bores us, sometimes it makes us romantic, sometimes it makes us violent. When you see a boxer going into the ring, he isn't listening to romantic music. He's listening to a song like Mama Says Knock You Out. We need to emotionally connect to what we are studying, not the music on the radio. When it comes to learning information, we can't afford to miss a single word. That's why we avoid distractions. Success is all about focus, which means to mentally and emotionally concentrate on what you are studying. If you eliminate distractions like the television or the radio playing, you are more likely to mentally and emotionally focus on what you are studying, and you will absorb the information. In other words, turn off the television and pick up the books. Hello and welcome to tool number four of Chief Teal's The Tools of Learning. We are in a firehouse at 197 Main Street in Hartford, Connecticut. This is Engine Company 1's and Ladder Company 6's watch room. One of the first things a person realizes upon becoming a firefighter 
is that you must learn the entirely different language of the profession. One day I was here talking to some of the veteran firefighters. I was trying to learn the definitions and terms of my profession. As I struggled to learn it all in a short amount of time, one of the veterans said, don't worry about this. It usually takes a person about five years to learn most of it. Since I knew that lives would be on the line, including mine, I determined that that was five years too long. So instead of learning it through experience, which can be the worst teacher, I developed a strategy for learning definitions to new words. That's what led to the following information on tool number four of Chief Teal's The Tools of Learning. This tool pertains to us knowing the meaning of words and phrases. While going through the learning process, be extra alert when you hear the words always or never. They are not used often, but when they are, it is usually to drive home a very important point. And that point in this case is, while in a classroom setting, you should never hear a word or phrase without knowing what that word or phrase means. If we lack knowledge about words or phrases, we can use words or phrases incorrectly. Words like conversate or oftenly. Phrases like with a fine tooth and a comb or for all intents and purposes aren't real words or phrases and using them can cause us to get bad grades in school and cause us to lose credibility as professionals. If we use a word or phrase incorrectly, it is called a malapropism. And some people think those who engage in malapropisms are uneducated and sometimes funny to listen to. To keep this from happening to you, do the following whenever you hear a word or phrase that you don't know the meaning of. Sense, search, synonym, sentence, and story. The word sense means to estimate what a word or phrase means when the teacher uses it. Determine how it is used in a sentence so that you can get a sense of what it means. However, don't assume that you know what the new word or phrase means yet. Even if you don't know how the word or every word of a phrase is spelled, write it down the way it sounds and the correct spelling when you look it up. Under search, as soon as possible, look up the word or phrase using a notes or memo application on your phone, the browser on your computer, or a dictionary. Look up the word or phrase until you understand what the word or phrase means completely. There are over 600,000 words in the English language. Some of those words we use when we speak. Other words we must know because we have to take exams that include those words. Words like indubitably, which means too apparent to be doubted, unquestionable. Most of us would never think of using this word but if we want to score high on the vocabulary portion of exams we plan on taking, then we have to know the meaning of it. Under synonym, think of a word or phrase that you already know that means the same thing as the word or phrases you have looked up and are trying to learn. If you don't know a word or phrase that is like the new word or phrase, then memorize the meaning of the new word or phrase. Someday it will serve as the synonym you know under sentence. Use the new word or phrase in a sentence during a conversation with someone. And under story, although this one is more time consuming, tell or write a story about the new word. Welcome to tool number five of Chief Teal's The Tools of Learning. We are at 41 Greenfield Street in Hartford, Connecticut. In 1965, this was 43 Greenfield Street and I lived right here. That was the start of the fifth grade. During that year, my challenges with the learning process seemed to intensify. However, I still found time to watch television. Television in the mid-1960s consisted of two or three television stations and a very limited variety of shows. The only exception was on Saturday, which had lots of cartoons for kids to watch. Therefore, because there was nothing else for a kid to watch during the week, I would watch shows designed for adults like Biography starring Mike Wallace. It was a show about the men and women throughout the world who distinguish themselves in one form or another. Watching this show and the following experience led to the development of tool number five of Chief Teal's The Tools of Learning.
You must also know why a person's name is mentioned during a lesson. If your teacher uses the name of someone you don't know, write it down phonetically if necessary and look it up later. Because according to recent statistics, six billion hours of information are downloaded to YouTube every month. YouTube is often an excellent source for looking up names like Dr. Jonas Salk. It must be remembered, however, that no one source of information should be the only one you use. When firefighters respond to a hazardous material spill, they use at least three sources of information before they decide how to handle that emergency. So, before you are certain you know what kind of contribution a person has made, use several sources of information. Well, that's all from Chief Teal's The Tools of Learning. Remember, never stop hitting the books.